Hi, my name is Ulysses Scott Williams, and I'm the Executive Director of Art Crawl Harlem. And welcome to Art Crawl Harlem's Boundaries and Connections Artist Residency Program on Governor's Island in New York City. I want to first thank you for joining us today. We have a fantastic artist studio visit planned featuring our first 2021 artist in residence. He's here working and creating in this historical house on Nolan Park on Governor's Island. Our residency program is a little unique because it's theme-based. Last year's residency program was Boundaries and Connections, 100 Years of Harlem, an ode to the centennial of the Harlem Renaissance. This year's program theme is art and activism. We've asked each artist to create a series of work based on their experiences, their notions of the history of America and global history, as well as the past 12 to 24 months and how activism has impacted our lives. Before we go any further, I have two people that I want you to meet. First is Dr. Shane Brennan. He's the Director of Public Programs here at Governor's Island and Ms. Marlene Archer, who is the Board of Directors Chair for Art Crawl Harlem. Great, thank you so much, Ulysses, and thank you all for coming and, and viewing this uh, video recording today. I'm uh, really pleased to be here. My name is Shane Brennan. I'm the Director of Public Programs at the Trust for Governor's Island. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, Governor's Island is a 172 acre park and public space in the middle of New York Harbor. Um, we have a wonderful arts and culture program, uh, lots of uh, climate and environmental education programs and so much more, um, lots of open space to explore. Um, a really exciting part of our program is that we get to host incredible arts and culture organizations from across the city, including of course, Art Crawl Harlem. Um, they are one of about 25 different cultural institutions that have dedicated programming space in our historic houses here on the island. Um, and out of those spaces, they present public exhibitions, artist residency programs, and a lot of other wonderful things. So um, in addition, there's uh, public art across the island. We have all sorts of events, festivals, um, concerts, um, and other cultural offerings to come and explore. Um, we re actually recently reopened for the public season. We're open from May through October, so please come out and visit. Um, come see Art Crawl Harlem space and their cultural programming and all of the other cultural organizations that are on the island with us this season. Um, I want to congratulate Art Crawl Harlem um, and thank them for being uh, our partners on the island um, and for being uh, such a wonderful organization and presence um, for our audience and congratulate all of the artists that they're hosting as well, um, who are out here working, uh, creating incredible art um, and engaging with the public. So with that, I will pass it off to the next speaker. Thanks again. Good afternoon. My name is Marlene Archer and I am the um, chair of the board of Art Crawl Harlem. And I welcome you. I welcome you to the virtual exhibit of our second year in residency at Governor's Island. Um, the focus of this exhibit is the art of Michael Obele. Uh, and this year, we have three artists who are in residency, and we hope you will come back for each of them. We have Michael, we have uh, Mario Joyce, and we have Melissa Sutherland Morse. And each of these artists will have a virtual tour and we would love you to come back. We know that that we have chosen some fantastic young and aspiring artists this time. We've got many many applications and we chose these three and these three will continue to raise the bar as it relates to um, the residency program. In addition to the residency program, ha Harlem Art Crawl has curated exhibits, has given um, tours of uh, of spaces in Harlem, art artistic spaces in Harlem. Harlem has such a rich artistic and cultural legacy, and we hope to continue or to re 
institute these towards going forward. But the purpose of this is to thank you for joining us and to invite you to please come to Woods Island to visit us. It's a wonderful place and you'd have a wonderful afternoon there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shane and Marlene. As they mentioned, this is our Carl Harlem's second year on Governor's Island, and we are so happy to be able to offer opportunity and space for talented New York City artists to spread out and create an opportunity space create. That's what it's all about. Oh, and one other important component is that the artists and residents have the ability to share their work and their processes with the public at large. It takes a lot of effort to execute an artist residency. Most importantly, we have to find the artists, or at least they need to find us. In order for that to make happen, make that happen, we have to execute a call for artists, an application process, put together a panel of jurors to review and select the artists that would become our artists in residence. I'm happy to share with you that our Carl Harlem's 2021 artists in residence are painter Mario Joyce, originally from Ohio, who now resides in Upper Manhattan. He's a self-taught artist. The next artist is Melissa Sutherland Moss, who's a mixed media artist and curator, now residing in Brooklyn. And the young man you meet today, painter and photographer Michael Obele, originally from Lagos, Nigeria, but now residing in the Bronx. I most importantly want to invite you all to come out and see each of these artists as they work through their residency program and we open up the space on weekends and invite you in. When you come to the Art Crawl Harlem House, we want you to exercise your artistic ability also with the Self-Guided Generation Project Wall. Community collaboration and partnership and engagement is a part of our mission, and we are so excited to be partnering with the G Project. Immigrants are us, the G Project. I am here today um, getting my G status <laughs> or understanding it, and it's always nice to be able to talk about and how you're connected to the world. Question number one, did you, your parents, or grandparents come from another country? If yes, where? If no, do you know where your people were from before the United States? Are you a Native American, American Indian? You can use words, you can use stick figures, you can just use colors, whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, as African Americans, many of us are not aware of our ancestral origins before yes. these shores. And I said that on one side of my family, um, I, we had traced back to Ivory Coast. I thought it was important to um, make the time to be a part of this project because immigrants are our friends, they're our neighbors, they're our co-workers, um, they are who we are. G stands for generation. And so we are all Gs. And depending on how far back our ancestry goes, defines what numerical status of G's we are. So for instance, I was born in Iraq, so I'm a G zero. I did share that I have one grandfather from Barbados, um, but that everybody else is from the United States, but the G status is, I call it for myself, uh, eight with a question mark. Yeah, so my grandparents came from Italy, but they had immigrated from another country before they went to Italy. So what is an immigrant? We throw the word out. I heard it this week, I heard it maybe 50 times. This is a work session. This is not a seminar.
Lorna Harris, executive producer of The Generation Project. The official title of the project is Immigrants Are Us, The Generation Project. The short term, we're also known as the G Project or The Generation Project. This project is a public art campaign sponsored by the Harlem Arts Foundation. And the premise of the project is that we are all immigrants through different generations. For example, G zeros are people who are born elsewhere. G ones are people who are born in the United States. G two are born after the G ones and so on and so on and so on. I myself am a G seven and I'm proud to say that. Uh, So Generations Are Us is very, very happy and proud to be affiliated with Art Crawl Harlem. They invited us to collaborate in this residency program that they're in, Art and Activism, Boundaries and Connections, and we are thrilled that the Executive Director, Ulysses, invited us to participate. So what you do with Generation Harlem, we're asking you to come in and we're asking you to pop in. This is called the pop in, pop into the Art Crow Harlem House on Nolan Park on Governor's Island and determine what your G status is. And we welcome you and we're here every Saturday and Sunday from noon to four o'clock. We'll see you then. I would like to thank Lorna Harris and the, G- the Generation Project Executive Producer and the G Project team for sharing with us the wonderful G Project interactive public art and installation wall here at the house. Again, I invite you all to the house to share with us what's your G status. As we create spaces for visual arts, we create and share spaces for performing and literary artists. Please enjoy. Harlem-based poet, Mama D, also known as Deborah Gray. First of all, I'd like to thank Art Crawl Harlem for allowing me to share poetry with you here at the um, residency's house, Art Residency's house on Governor's Island. So the first poem that I'm gonna share, uh, people always ask, Who am I? So let me share that. Born black back in my day, you had to stand tall and be firm in a positive way. See, I'm my mother's only one, a daughter lonely searching for fun. But growing up with family and lots of friends is how my life story begins. And you ask, who am I? Well, I'm friendly meeting people here and there. And I've traveled across the country going everywhere. A professional dancer is what I became, working under a fictitious name, dancing on stage all around the world. (laughs) I was a hell of a dancer, one busy girl, and then he asked, who am I? Well, I never pictured myself as a wife. I didn't want that type of life. And who would have thought that I would be married with children at 23, and then she asked, who am I? So here I am many years later. I'm older, I'm better, I'm ready and able. I'm a God-fearing woman, praying day and night, doing all I can trying to make things right. Going to church on Sunday, whether it rains or shine, and then this guy asked me, who am I? Well, I'm a mother who has fostered a few, And that's just a touch of the many things I can do. I'm a spiritual mother, godmother, and grandmother too. I'm a strong black sister with plenty to do. I'm a mentor who likes working and helping teens, but I like cooking and dancing and spit a little poetry. So don't be hating because I'm still doing my thing. I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it in full swing. See, I'm a ripe old great from a fertile Harlem vine, and I've aged to perfection. So why y'all keep asking who am I? Thank you, Mama D. The next two individuals I want you to meet are Sandra Alexis Heath and Demarcus McGoy. 
Sandra is director and co-founder of Heath Gallery in Harlem. She's been such an amazing asset to our Paul Harlem, advising me when needed, and also agreed to provide one-on-one -on -one professional development for the artists in residence. Demarcus McGoy, he was one of our 2020 artists in residency here on Governor's Island. A talented industrious artist, he created a body of work celebrating the centennial of the Harlem Renaissance while here on Governor's Island. I'll let them tell you more. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Alexis Heath. I am the co-founder and director of Heath Gallery in New York City in the wonderful community of Harlem. If you're not familiar with Heath Gallery, we are located directly across the street from Marcus Garvey Park in the historic Mount Morris Park uh, community area. And I'm thrilled to tell you uh, that we have an exhibit that's currently up. It's called Rise. We're featuring 12 Black women who are diverse in the styles in which they create and also diverse in age. And I really uh, hope that you'll come up and check out this exhibit, which will be running through the end of June. My relationship with Art Crawl Harlem goes way back to the very beginning when Art Crawl Harlem was really just the seed of an idea in the minds of the founders, Avalyn Archer and Jacqueline Orange. At that time, um, Heath Gallery, we, we have been around since 2002 and early uh, in, our, in our life, I founded something called the Harlem Gallery Owners Coalition. The whole idea being to bring others together who were gallery owners and in this industry to collaborate specifically on, uh, on advertising and projects that could be uh, rather expensive. But anyway, uh, Averlyn and Jacqueline attended that meeting and shared that they have an interest in doing a tour uh, through Harlem so that um, collectors and residents could experience the galleries in Harlem. I thought it was a great idea and we decided that we would meet offline. We did that and shortly thereafter, they launched the first trolley tour, which was awesome. Heath Gallery was one of the founding galleries on that tour. Uh, I believe that there were four. It was quite successful. Art was sold. Uh, there were um, collectors who had a chance to find out about galleries in Harlem that they didn't know about. And on the um, second tour, my daughter actually curated the, that particular exhibit for the second tour that we were on. And uh, we were really thrilled that that tour received um, media coverage. And so that was just wonderful for her to see her art um, uh, her, you know, the, the exhibit that she had curated um, covered. And the reason that I bring that up, Art Crawl Harlem serves um, an important role for artists, but also for the entire art ecosystem. The work that Art Crawl Harlem does, artists benefit, galleries benefit, um, uh, you know, curators benefit, those who are established collectors and buyers, and those who are interested in just starting out. Anybody who's part of the ecosystem benefits from the work that Art Paul Harlem does and is really, really important. My current role uh, with Art Paul Harlem is that I serve as um, an advisor and I've been doing that since I believe last year, kind of officially, unofficially, uh, but also this year I've taken on the role of providing some professional development for artists on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The residency is so important for artists. Artists need a place where they can come and do work. Uh, not every artist has a studio. And one of the things that we realized last year during the pandemic, that so many artists were not able to create because they no longer had access to a studio or they didn't have studio space at all. The other thing that residency does that's really important is that it allows artists to take time away and focus on creating a body of work, um, focus on, on expanding or creating collection, and that's really important for their long-term career goals. And even after that body of work has been created, uh, where I come in and what's really important is that artists have some clarity around their goals, what they want to do, and how they're going to get there. And so the other service that I think is so important that Art Call Hall provides is the professional development. Um, you know, that which is that which is caught, that which is um, shared through the uh, efforts of, 
um, someone like the executive director, um, Ulysses Scott Williams, who I consider to be father bear, you know, loving father bear, you know, guarding uh, those that come to the residency. And uh, also through the work that myself and others do with great intention to ensure that these artists are successful. It was really wonderful um, being able to participate in the juror selection uh, this year. I'm excited about the way that this residency program um, is expanding. And I wanna be sure to send my congratulations to the three artists who were selected. Um, I, I, I uh, had some involvement in the program last year and the artists last year, and it's just exciting to see how the, how the program um, continues to grow. Congratulations to everyone involved, and thank you, Art Crawl Harlem, for being here to make a difference in the world of art, you know, for, for the entire art uh, community. I'm Sandra Alexis Heath. Thank you, Ulysses. Uh, my name is Demarcus McGoy, and I am one of the 2020 Artists and Residents of Art Crawl Harlem where our theme was Boundaries and Connections, celebrating 100 years of Harlem. Um, Art Crawl Harlem is an organization that's very like dear to me. Um, a year before being in the residency, I ended up going to Governor's Island just like a weekend trip. And I remember walking through Nolan Park and I remember seeing all the yellow homes and, um, and, and, and noticing that there were artists and residents there and I got to meet some of the artists there. I got to see what they were working on. And I had all these questions about like, why are these artists, you know, um, do they live here? How did they get their artwork here? I just had all these questions. And I remember standing in front of one of the homes saying, one day I will be an artist in residence in Governor's Island. Not knowing in less than a year later, I would actually be a resident there in Northern Park. Um, it was one of the most um, vulnerable, powerful experiences that I've ever had um, because it happened during a pandemic and it happened when things were really scary. And um, I had just lost my studio in Brooklyn, not knowing where to go, how I was going to create, where I was going to go. And I ended up applying for the residency and I ended up meeting Ulysses, going through a process with him. And um, I ended up, I ended up researching and developing my, pushing my art, having breakthroughs in a way that I've never experienced before. Um, having the one-on-one -on -one time with Ulysses and with the other um, members of the organization, I was able to look at my work differently. I was able to research things. I was able to hone in on my craft a little bit more than what I was doing. And I was able to learn how to tell stories in a way that I've never told stories before. Um, I learned how to um, be consistent and to be consistent within my art. And, you know, Rodney Love Jones, he was just an amazing um, advisor that I had. And Rodney really supported me in pushing my art to another level. Um, so within the house, like I would get up every day, I would be there on the first ferry there and I'd be on the last ferry coming home. So I really utilize my time there. And even just being in the house, um, you know, I came from a humble way of being, a way of, a, a grateful way of being, of being in the home and not knowing of how many other black people or black artists that being in that home had the opportunity to be in there. So um, I really, took to that space and I really utilized being in that space, putting it within my artwork. So just being in there and just having this whole studio or this house to myself, I was able to look at the history and the things that were on the wall and I, I put those in my artwork. So in the background, here's some of my artwork that I produced while I was in the house. Um, I did a mashup of, um, of images from the Harlem Renaissance and infusing that with people who migrated to Harlem from other places of the world. And so I vetted out people who lived in Harlem and as a life coach, I ended up talking to them and talking about like their mental health and the things that gravitated them to Harlem, the things that made them want to move to Harlem. What's the things that they like about Harlem? So in the background of my pieces, here's some of the people that you see. Um, and and it was, it, it really, 
I think for me, it really, as an artist, I was able to experience Harlem as a storyteller and as a as an outsider. So I feel like they opened up the doors to let me see what their world is. Um, yeah, I, I've been through like some other residencies, like international residencies. This was probably, I think, like my third or my fourth residency. And what I can say, what the difference was with this one was um, it felt right. You know, it felt like they really took the time to um, to develop me and to, to develop my art. There was a lot of things that I thought I knew, but you know, again, you don't know what you don't know. And the staff and the people in the organization really helped build up my confidence and really helped build up my art and allow me to research more and to develop my stories and my paintings a little bit more. And again, my name is DeMarcus McGoy. I just want to say thank you to Art Crawl Harlem for all the time and energy that you invested in me. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Michael, to Mario, and to Melissa. Wow, three M's. Um, congratulations to you all. I hope that you find peace. I hope you find creativity. I hope that you find abundance in that house and on that island. I hope you find your magic. And I can't wait to see what you produce this year. Congratulations. Most people always ask me, what is Create Your Life? Create Your Life is the, the power of declaration, is getting grounded and getting centered within yourself, within your heart and within your mind. It's co-creating with God. It's creating a path and a journey for yourself. There's something that you can do better than anybody else in this world. You have a talent and you are uniquely designed. It's your duty and your responsibility to use that gift to empower the world and to impact the world. When I often talk about Create Your Life, it's about taking that, that talent, that gift that it is that you possess, and you impact the world with that gift. I dare you to do it. I dare you to use your gifts, and I dare you to create your life. My name is Demarcus McGoy. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you all the man behind me, our first 2021 artist in residence, portrait artist, and Afrobeats ambassador, Mr. Michael Obele. Hi, my name is Michael Obele. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm a self taught visual artist. I'm involved in other aspects of art as well and entertainment. I like to call it entertainment. The type of art I do is realistic charcoal pencil portrait drawing and I paint with pastel color as well. I'm a photographer and that also helps with the type of art I do because I'm able to take pictures of the images and subjects that I want to create. And I also draw from other pictures too that I'm inspired by that are not original photos. Our music is a very important, important part of, part of our process, and I am a proud ambassador of the Afrobeat music genre. A bit of background about myself, I, uh, I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. I live with my family, my dad and my mom, my elder sister, and my younger brother. I'm the middle child. Growing up as a child, um, going to school to learn how to read and write. In my experience, I thought you go to school to learn how to read and write and draw. Now I know that's not a general experience for everybody else. That I realized, realized later on in life that the gift and the ability for me to be able to draw images and objects the way I see them is a talent. I thought that everybody goes to school to learn how to read or write and spell. For example, when a teacher teaches you how to spell apple and say A, B, B, L, E, apple, I thought that you not only learn how to read it and spell it, you also got to learn how to draw the apple. And I've been doing that growing up as a kid, and that has helped me develop my skill, and that has helped me to become the type of artist that I am today. My process, when I'm going to create the piece, involves three phases. The first phase is the conceptualization, and the second phase is the execution, 
and the third phase is the finishing. In the first phase, that involves me getting the idea of the piece that I'm going to create and guided by the theme and the message that I want to pass. When I have the idea in my head, the next thing I do is to choose the photo. So that involves either me having to do a photo shoot session or I'm choosing pictures from my archives of original photos that I have. And sometimes I also draw from other pictures that are not my original photos that I'm inspired by. Then now that I have gotten the photo or the pictures that I want to do, the next thing I do is find a way how to present it and how it's going to look like the aesthetics. So I'm able to get the pictures to put together and put it how I want it to look like on paper and how I want the art to come about. And I move on to the next phase, uh, which is the execution phase. And the first thing I do is to identify the tools that I need for the piece, for the work that I want to create. So that helps me identify uh, the gradient of pencils and the palettes of colors that I want to use for it. If I'm doing it all black and white or if I'm gonna uh, put a little bit of colors in them. Now I've identified the tools, the next thing I do is scaling. And the scaling, that's where like the engineering me comes out. Because that involves me that helps me to be able to uh, decide if I want to make the piece to be as small as a phone or as big as a house. And that's what scaling does for me. Now that I've identified what I want it to look like and the size that I want to do with it, I move on to the development phase. And that is where uh, the development phase, in, uh, that I move on to developing the work. And that is where I'm able to use my tools and the techniques to be able to bring the art to life. And after that, I fix it with a spray um, for it to not smudge and for it to stay on the paper. And then now we move on to uh, the last phase, which is the finishing. And this part is very important to me and because this part involves storage and I always ensure to store my art at the part of the house or the part of the studio where it does not come in contact with liquid and it doesn't come in contact with food or anything edible to avoid damages to the art. And then the final aspect of it is taking it to the studio and picking out the right type of frame, glass, and mat to bring and put the work together and make it presentable. Um, moving on to the pieces that I'm creating on the artist residency house. The theme for this year's residency is art and activism. And I, I am approaching this from a very fundamental aspect of the state of being a black person. And I am creating pieces to show love and appreciation for us as black African people. And the first piece I created in the house is this piece. And this piece is a portrait drawing of a beautiful black African woman. And I took this picture myself. I did a photo shoot session to be able to get a picture, to be able to create, show the idea, to choose a picture to show the idea and create the art that I wanted to. And my intention behind doing this art was to show her, you know, her boldness, her elegance, and her pride as a beautiful black woman. And my art is very realistic. I want it to give the audience a very a feeling, an emotional feeling. You could almost feel like you could touch it or she could turn and look at you. And going by the general theme of boundaries and connections, I intentionally inverted the middle part of the portrait to create a sort of a boundary and when you invert it, you can see that this is also the continuation of her face. And my intention behind doing that is to create a connection, more connection to the art. The second piece that I'm creating artist, artist residency house is the piece that I wanted to show love and brotherhood 
and childhood. And this is a piece that I'm drawing from an original, original photo that I took of two brothers. I, my idea behind this is kids are very impressionable and I want us as black children to be able to love ourselves regardless of the shade and tone of our skin as a black people. And that was my, my idea behind doing this art. So I'm doing a picture, I'm drawing, a, I'm drawing a picture of two brothers, different shades, and they are blood brothers, and they love each other, and they are happy and smiling as black kids. The thing about this artist residency is that I am allowed to bring and show my already existing work. And I brought with me uh, work that I made uh, a series that I started back in 2017 that I made spanning from the year 2017 to 2020 is a series that I call the 21st century Black African Youth. I create my intention of creating this series is to show us Black African youth how we are in our modern world and how we are and how we express ourselves as a reflection of our environment and integration and basically how we are in the modern society. And the reason behind that is, as a child growing up in school, when teacher in art, in fine art classes, the teacher, when they always ask us to draw a black African face, they always end up wanting us to draw a face of a black African person with tribal marks on their face and charcoal marks on their face. And as a little child, that was not what I was seeing around me or my general experience. So I intentionally wanted to create art showing us as young black African youth how it look like now. And the first piece I created in this series is this piece. I love this piece so much because when I found this photo, it provoked emotion out of me and I wanted to do it and I had to do it. This piece took me six months to make. I started it in 2017 and I finished in 2018. My idea with this was I wanted to use my technique with charcoal pencil to show the body and her face in black and white and able to show all the details and her face reflecting her emotion. And I wanted to highlight the flowers, the colors to make the art beautiful. And this is another piece that's also part of that series that I made. And this is a piece of a very talented and amazing British R&B artist. I'm inspired by her songs, I'm inspired by her sound, and I was inspired by this photo. The actual original photo is all in color, but I wanted to use the same technique that I'm using in the series that I used for this one to do the actual um, um, face and body in black and white and use color to highlight the flowers that we use as props for the photo. And along the line of while I was doing different pieces for the series, I realized that all the pieces that I'm making are pieces of women. And I was like, I need a man to be part of the series. I wanted to do a portrait of a man. And I was going through pictures. I was thinking about having to maybe schedule a photo shoot session to get, to get, a, to get a good photo to create. And then I found this beautiful and amazing picture of my cousin. He's, this is my cousin. And I don't know if this is a professional passport photo for a job or for work or for school, but I loved the photo. I liked it. I was captivated by the smile and I had to do it. I wanted to work on it. This piece took me a month to make. So I made it. I did this piece as part of the series on uh, showing 21st century Black African youth. This has been a very great experience and I would love you to come to Governor's Island to see my artworks. I've enjoyed my, I'm enjoying my time here. This is an amazing experience and I want to thank Alcohol Harlem for this amazing opportunity. Hi, my name is Nakia Hicks. I'm one of the executive board members with Art Crow Harlem. All great civilizations have been noted on two things, their military and of course their art. More importantly, 
the art of the people, the art of the marginalized, that is what we are most committed to here at Art Pro Harlem, making sure that we're creating opportunities to not only support, but promote the art of art and artists that come from our communities that are interested in telling our stories, our very special stories. This year's residency is based on the art as activists or artists as activists. And so the three artists that are going to be participating in our residency are going to create works of art that show us from their perspective how important it is to use their mediums to communicate the spirit of the times that we're in, the struggles that we're facing. When we invite you to come to Governor's Island, we don't just want you to come and take a look at the art. We want you to also understand how impassioned we are as an organization and how committed we are to making sure that these artists continue to be supported, that opportunities such as our residencies and all of our solo and group uh, exhibitions are also brought to you in a way that helps promote the mission. And so we ask that you do come out. We ask that you experience the art. And more importantly, when you do have an opportunity to support us, please do that. And it's just not monetary. Obviously, as a nonprofit organization, we would love your donations. But also, if you have an area of interest, feel free to come out and donate your time. Feel free to volunteer. We are super impassioned about uh, children and education. And so if there are some things that or areas that you would be interested in participating with us, give us a call, reach out. We're a community, we're a com an art organization for the community, and we do want you to feel welcome to participate with us as we continue to support these wonderful art programs. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nakia. As she mentioned, your support is so necessary to us. Come out and visit the residency house. Check out our exhibits when you can even volunteer or make a donation. Also, go to our website, artcrawlharlem.org and leave your contact information to receive our monthly newsletters and program announcements. This year's Artist Residency Program is quite special because it's dedicated to the memory of artist Timothy Folks. Christine Folks, his mother and his siblings made a donation to cover the artist stipends for this year's residency program. If you'd like to check out Timothy Folks' artworks, you can. He, has installed, he installed a beautiful mural back in 1995 with artist Shirley Johnson, which is still on display at the Edward P. Bowman Park in Harlem at 52 West 129th Street. These are two amazing murals featuring waterfalls and sunflowers. For more information about Timothy Folks, please go to artcrawlharlem.org. I'm sure you all agree Michael Avele did a great job and I wanna thank him for sharing his work with us and his process. I also wanna thank you all out there for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you all when you visit Art Crawl Harlem's residency program house on Nolan Park. Our house number is actually 4B. Join us again for our upcoming studio visits with Melissa Sutherland Moss and Mario Joyce. And remember to explore, experience, and appreciate art.